Hold on. So if, if they hit them with a with an M, don't you got to recoup that though? They got. Oh, we got to recoup that's all what, that that's money. What, that's yeah, what I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, but yeah, they're yeah. going to do their part. But I can honestly tell you, bro, it's more than an M. Because you got to think about this. P got five hundred thousand. We got five hundred thousand, right? They still pay for the printing, the T-shirts. None of that came out of our money. So out of that five hundred k, how much do you personally take home? Like, I remember when we first got our money. When our money clear, boy, we couldn't wait to pull up all them niggas and get them niggas their money back. Uh, yeah. Because it was a, it's a, it was a different ball game of it. Like we were just we, and they had no idea the kind of money we was gonna get. So can you uh, just give the viewers a little insight on the actual, like, con contractual agreement with uh, Master P and No Limit? Since you all right, you this highway to, I, to put it in small yeah. terms, this highway, right? Master P co-signed it, right? He did all the production for the album. Put anybody that wanted on the album, and he went and got a, and he got a million dollars for it. He gave us five hundred thousand, but what he was supposed to do with his other half of the money? was promote the second leg of the album. Because you got to remember, um, Brick Living went gold with one single. All, only, only video you ever saw was How You Like It, baby. Hold on, so I, the, the Humbra? Uh... Humbra, actually, we shot that damn there ourselves. Okay. So, Humbra mostly was a part of the compilation, right? But what we did was we made that my single. Okay. Because we hadn't already shot like Humber didn't come from when we shot Humber, that wasn't no money paid by priority. But the video when you on the football field and all of that. Now you can you see the difference? You know we yeah. shooting that shit the in the quality, Superdome yeah. and all that shit. <laughs> I flipped out there, you see the difference, right? Sure. They sprayed the shit, tough guy and all that kind of shit, like that was going on there. So then Humber probably cost it I think we give give Chris them like forty, thirty thousand or some shit. And imagine what and how you like it, baby? Cost you probably two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Man, I was about to say like half a million. I don't know, yeah, bro. Yeah, Cause yeah, listen, yeah. what you don't know is you know them when we in the hot tub. You know where that's at? Mm. That's the fucking Superdome locker room. Man, the Superdome. Like now, I can look back at that shit and think, why the fuck did we have to go to the Superdome locker room? No, you ready for this? P what now? We put P in that video. So I was like, why the f do I need the Superdome? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But but I guess that was him trying to make it high quality and all that kind of shit. We made a whole lot of money off how you like it, baby. You talk your ass off. For real, for real. Look back at 106 and Park with uh, mm -hmm. AJ and Free. Uh, with AJ and Free. Yeah. You remember on the commercials when they're doing all that talking? Remember what you were saying in the background? Bam. But I. But uh, that was my instrumental. I know that had to be like some, some like some pep rally themes you saw back there. I'm, I'm sure it went crazy. At I the, don't know, at bro, because by the time that shit kicked, we was out of here. Yeah, I wasn't performing at a lot of. Uh, we was gone. We was on tour. Okay. When I shot, where you at, Wardy? Why you? If pay attention to this, right? I'm in two scenes on where you at, Wardy. One in the project. And you one in the SUV. And one in that. What you call? It? Okay, that's yeah. two different days. So, the day we shot, um, it, I was leaving for tour that day. I was leaving on my promo tour. I was about to be gone for four to five days. So my buses was out there waiting on me to get you shooting that shit. Mm. So as quick as I got you shooting it, that's why I'm not in magic scenes. Remember they went to the night war and all that. As quick as they got you shooting it, I was on the road on my way to Miami. Back to business. Yeah. That was priority though. They had them put all that. They had them scheduled me a promo tour and all that kind of shit. So yeah, that, I think that's the part you left out. So he co-signed for you, but the album came out through priority though. Mm -hmm. Okay, which was a major label head. Because so, he had a distribution deal through priority. Exactly. Say, I mean, we go to Pete. I want the shit to go platinum because in the times everybody going platinum. I don't tripping out no gold. And P gave us some game. P gave us some jewels, but we ain't, we wasn't fucking with it. P said. Because, all right, so, mind you, like, when I first do the album, like, I, I have fucking t-shirts everywhere. Every motherfucker in the city had a tough guy t-shirt. Mm -hmm. Like, we was swinging them bitches. It was like, anything, like, what we wanted, we used to always see how, what P had, like, the body body t-shirts and all that kind of shit. We like, we want that kind of promo. P said, I'm going to show y'all. And nigga sent us 40 boxes of shirts. You could see them, bro. They still got people in the city to this day that still have t-shirts, tough guy t-shirts. He sent us 
40 boxes of t-shirts, right? All different sizes. He sent us like five, ten boxes of handkerchiefs for people to tie around their head. Like we gave that shit all over. So that's what made Tough Guy brand. Man. Like people weren't realizing what we was doing, but we was following the Master P method. Man. He was smart though, because when the, when Mr. The, with the post, some post album came out, Mr. Postman, what he called himself? Uh, yeah. The, he sent uh, us them motherfucking boxes too. They yeah. say, get him away too. Yeah. Uh, but oh, that's man. what he was doing. Like, we, boy, we flooded the city with them bitches. Yeah. So we made, like, it was like, um. Y'all had the little posters and stuff. Man, we on had, the yeah, like, we uh, had everything. Bro. Yeah. And they were sending us boxes of that shit because you gotta understand, I'm, I, I would have made it. The first leg of it, the major takes care of everything. The second leg, P takes care. So they gotta recoup. They gonna recoup, but I'm just telling you for the budget, anything I need, mm -hmm. I don't call P. I call Priority Records. Hold on. So if, if they hit them with a with an M, don't you gotta recoup that though? They got. Oh, we that. gotta recoup that's all what, that that's money. What, yeah, that's what I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, but yeah, they're yeah. going to do their part. But I can honestly tell you, bro, it's more than an M, because you gotta think about this. P got five hundred thousand. We got five hundred thousand, right? They still pay for the printing, the t-shirts, none of that came out of our money. So out of that 500 k how much do you personally take home? 200 and I, two, wait bro, I don't want to lie to you because I'm going to tell you this. Me, Victor, and Dodo, because we all was runners of the company. I remember the split, but I actually can't remember it now. But we got like the same thing, okay? We took care of... Our other partner tweet, our other partner big U, and we put money into the tough guy account. The tough guy account, I ain't never heard of no shit like this too though, but this kind of, this the this the kind of shit that dope used to come up with, right? So in order for us to get an account for the tough guy shit, two of us had to have a signature on the shit. Wow. But I never knew nothing, nothing. I understand that shit now, but I'm telling you, we was doing that back then, so that's how fat a nigga was with business. Two, yeah, they had two signatures. Yeah, they had to be him and Victor, me and Victor, me and him, or him you know what I'm saying? But he put, he structured that shit like that. That's and right. we, I ain't yeah. know where we got that shit from, Swabba. 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 This oh, is oh, 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 yeah, Pink. The one you say, See, he, he got teaching kidnapped. us as we riding around with him. <laughs> yeah. He teaching us shit, though. Okay. Like, we learning the game from him as we riding around. He teaching us shit. But I ain't never knew no shit about no double signature on no check. Mm -hmm. But he did that, so, and then... Uh, to make Victor feel comfortable, cause Victor was wild at the time. Victor was still in the streets and shit. Oh, was he but, like? He was like a big, not to cut you out, like a big dog. Oh, he like a, been a big timer before he. Um, he was a big timer before he was a big timer back in the game when we was doing fucking weight. Um, worth the weight. When you say a big timer, you I'm, mean like a kingpin? Yeah, definitely. Oh, Vic! Everybody know Victor. Eating good. Like a hey, bro. Like Victor's first motherfucker. You know the first car I ever wrecked. Know what I learned? Well, I ain't gonna say that's how I learned how to drive because uh, my partner Rashid, you have, you know Rashid from the Magnolia. Yeah, that's my the, partner. Is he a barber? Yeah, he stayed next door to me. That's the one who uh, Rashid out the Magnolia. Yeah. Body, body. <laughs> so one time Rashid didn't even get a rock runner, right? <laughs> what they do is so we pass in front of the dope. All our mamas outside talking to the nigga who we got the call from. So we know he didn't ratted on. Rashid and them tell me, <laughs> say, listen, we gonna get out, we gonna walk down the street, and you drive the car down the long driveway, right? Now the long driveway is just straight shot. I made it down there. Now once you go down this hump, it's Willow Street that you cross, but our driveway goes kind of like this, cause it's a church behind. I hit every motherfucking thing back there. Boy, did I? And I parked that bitch. I hit every. That was my first time driving. <laughs> I hit everything back there. Now my second wreck was, it wasn't really a wreck though. <laughs> me and my partner, uh, Sweet Pea, Victor, give me his call. It's the, the uh, Victor was the first nigga that had the convertible cutlass. Remember they had the convertible cutlass with the ball on the top? Mm. They had the green one. I'm riding around with that. I had the fucking cell phone, you know that big ass cell phone? Mm. Yeah, it's that, that's how oh, big, the brick, the brick uh, that's how, uh, how hard he was balling, right? Yeah, back then. Me and Sweepy in the coat, I hit the fucking curb. Fuck his rim off. Damn. What's the odds of that? Was he even tripping? He ain't getting no fucks. That nigga told that bitch to say, I ain't tripping, you gonna work it off. I was working at, I was working at, worked away at the time. Oh, okay. He was like, you gonna work it off. 
But I really didn't work it off. Because after that, like, he started, I, I, after that, like, I started driving him around. Mm-hmm. But I really didn't work it off. Like, that's the nigga who I can see. Between him and Stone, that's niggas who gave me real opportunities. And I ain't talking about just, niggas, you know how niggas that give you straight opportunities, right? Like, I'm talking about motherfuckers realizing your talent and giving you opportunities outside of that. Cause I mean, I told you about the story one night with me and Sweet People trying to rob something and Stone asked me what the fuck I'm doing. No, I don't think you told me that one. It's a late night, right? <clears throat> so they got a dude on the, um, a, 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 a little buggy around the corner that we see it, right? So we really want to go robbing, right? But at the same time, I'm trying to get some shit from Stone because me and Sweet was hustlers, right? Sweet Pea stay right next door to the gangster. That's how I, I me and gangster relationship is like that, you know, because Sweepy was one of my best friends, and they stay right next door to each other. So I'm hollering that when we see Stone, it's like it's like three in the morning. This how Stone used to be moved. It's like three in the morning. Still low. He, he moved. He in the car. Getting to it. Yeah, I think at that time he got the green Lexus or something, right? He high about what y'all doing out here and all that, right? Now mind you, in this time I'm into music. But I ain't really pop, so I'm discouraged on the shit. So I'm asking him, like, what's up with some shit? Like, trying to get some work. I, man, Stone looked at me like, like, all right, I got you. That nigga left, come back, and he gave me a brown paper bag. I think, I don't want to lie, bro, I won't say it like it had, like, $3,500 or something. Now. And told me, man, you better get your good rapping ass on back to rap. Damn. Like, Stone was that kind of nigga. Like, Sweet right here with me. Me and Sweet plotting on. Stone crazy. Stone the one of the reasons got me smoking them fucking black and miles. I ain't, man, I wasn't smoking no black and miles. I was, Stone used to have that bitch in his mouth and shit like that. Like, I developed that fucking habit fucking with him. Just like, you know, a nigga emulating what they see. How did you um, connect Stone? He was older than you? Yeah, definitely. Um... Like coming up in the Magnolia, earlier on, like what's your earliest like memories of uh, Stone? Back then, hey, was he always like one of the uh, well-known people in y'all projects when you was coming up? Had that Definitely. reputation? Like, I think like as in coming up, like I knew about him boxing. I knew he could fight his ass off, right? And then I think I got the opportunity to probably like meet him. Um, I'm gonna lie, bro. It probably was a dice game or something. Where I met him, that mother, he was a motherfucker with them dice, and I was a dog on them dice. Mm. Like on Willow Street, I was a motherfucker on them dice. For like really? I used to bust niggas' ass on them dice. I ain't had no lot of money, but I would kick niggas. Like Magnolia Chop grew up right across the. You know, Magnolia Chop grew up right across the fucking. We all in the same courtway. Magnolia Chop right across the courtway, and I used to tear niggas' ass up on dice, right? And I think I went probably in the sixth quarter in Belmont or something and started fucking with him on some dice and he just took a like to me. But I always been around all them kind of dudes. Like I grew up with like Claudia B, um, Booby Black, Gangsta, T, uh, TB. Like I grew up around all them dudes. Cause like soon as I turned the corner, I'm looking at on that fucking porch, that's round of commotion and that's it's the stunner before stunner. A lot of people don't mention Ronald Kamuch, though. Ronald Kamuch was the stunner before stunner, bro. Like that Kamuch fan, boy, they had some fucking money. Mm-hmm. And they stayed right across the street from Claudia B. In the projects. Right. Claud- Claudia is like, I think, um, I don't know what the fuck it was. Gangster told you what it was, but he had a Mac 10 or some shit. Like, they ain't never saw no gun like that. Like, we used to be, say, bro, when I was coming up, we had fucking German Lugers. You know what that is? Yeah. Like, big old fucking 22 that's heavy as a motherfucker. Like, we had that. And, like, when they talk about 9 millimeters and shit, probably the first gun I seen, I want to say it's an 8 millimeter. You know how heavy that shit is? It's the 8 millimeter. It's either the 8 millimeter or 10 millimeter. This is a big, heavy ass gun, bro. I heard the 10 milli supposed to be kind of. Yeah. It's just an old gun. Though. This bitch is so heavy. Like, this what niggas used to rob niggas with because they'll smack the piss out you with it. You're going to get your mind right. Oh, this bitch. It's like a. Like, I remember the 22 German Lugo. That, that bitch was heavy. Them big old heavy guns, man. They looked at like play guns. The fucking barrel on them that long and all that kind of shit. Like, that's the first guns I seen. Mm. 